So in today's video, I'm going over Debian versus Ubuntu. This is kind of an interesting thing just because, well, Debian is more geared towards a, a, a veteran user and Ubuntu is more geared towards a beginning user. But really, what are the differences between the two? First off, when it comes to market share between Debian, Ubuntu, and Linux users, they're very close. Ubuntu is a little more popular with about 23% people using it and 16% using Debian. Now, these numbers are not exact with anything in Linux. Uh, there's some uh, a lot of data collection that's voluntary, so we don't know the exact numbers. And I have a, a feeling that the Debian users will probably be a little bit higher because a lot of them will probably opt out of saying, hey, I use Debian. But at the same token, uh, just in a general pool, uh, this is about what you see for market share of Linux users. So both of them together make up dang near half of all Linux users, which is pretty amazing. So starting off with what is actually the differences between the two, Debian itself is for those more security conscious users. And Ubuntu is more geared to the actual beginner because it's uh, a lot of its packaging and other things that it has over the Debian counterpart. So think of Debian as a more uh, secure distribution than that of Ubuntu because there's just less stuff in it to really muck it up and, and do some other stuff, which I'm about to get into. In that same realm, Debian uses all free software by default, which is pretty amazing. And Ubuntu packages a lot of proprietary stuff directly in. Even on a minimal Ubuntu install, there's still some uh, proprietary like hardware blobs and things like that in there. And why that matters is uh, Ubuntu, when it comes to like Wi-Fi, network cards, if you have like an NVIDIA card uh, for your graphics, these things all use proprietary drivers, or many of them do, and they need those to work. So a free version of Debian may not even boot on your system because it just doesn't have the drivers. It just depends on how your systems are configured, or maybe it'll boot, but you don't have any network connection. So it, it, as far as free always being a good thing, in some instances, like the hardware support, it actually counts as almost a negative against Debian. Now, that's not to say you can't just go ahead and install that stuff. You just need to know out of the gate, oh, hey, I have a Wi-Fi uh, adapter that is doesn't have any uh, free drivers that are in the Linux kernel. I know I need to install the proprietary uh, firmware to make sure that driver works. So that is more of an advanced thing. And like I said at the beginning of this, that's really why a lot of experts use Debian because they don't want all that junk on their system. And uh, a beginner would use Ubuntu because, well, it just comes packaged by default, so it just works. And you don't have to worry about it. Now, that said, there are versions of Debian that are really, really good. There's uh, a Debian non-free, which is fantastic, that includes a lot of these proprietary hardware blobs and things that are needed to make your Wi-Fi drivers functional or these types of things. So if you're trying Debian and your system's not working right or parts of your hardware aren't functional, uh, definitely try downloading the Debian non-free version. You have to dig a little bit for this one because by default, uh, Debian just ships everything free and that's what your default downloads are. So going over, we've gone over, you know, hey, it's more secure as far as Debian. And it also is ships with all this free software. There's other packages in there, like Ubuntu has more compatibility, not only hardware, but also software-wise, because it has something called PPAs. It makes it very easy to install uh, software that's not part of the, the Debian repositories, and you makes it very easy to add more repositories to your uh, APT, or your package manager, to download stuff. So, this is pretty cool. This is really neat. I love the PPAs in Ubuntu. And uh, before anybody asks, no, you can't use PPAs in Debian, even though it allows you to install it. And yes, you can kind of get that working. Uh, a lot of times it just breaks the install. It's not meant for that. So don't try it. Uh, there's a good article on Debian that says, hey, don't break Debian. And one of the like top ones that everyone does to break it is use PPAs. Don't do it. It's bad. It's meant for Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. Now, sticking to the actual software version of this, or the software that we use, 
Debian uses older software in its stable release, and these releases vary a lot, but by default, Ubuntu will have newer software than Debian stable. So this is really important to know. A lot of people get confused why Debian doesn't work exactly like Ubuntu or Ubuntu doesn't work like Debian, uh, mainly because the release schedule and how they package everything up is completely different. So Debian stable usually runs like a year, sometimes several years behind, somewhere up to, I think, three or four years in some instances. So the stable branch is meant specifically to be always stable, like rock solid stable. You could run a system for years and years without one reboot with Debian stable. That's how stable that is. But it uses older software to accomplish this. So that's really kind of important to know. And I almost view it as a drawback when it comes to desktop users because nobody wants to be using that old of software releases in desktop environments or desktop usage. Uh, Debian Stable is mainly geared towards server-based applications where you don't want it doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, it's okay if it runs that far behind. You want it to do its one purpose. Where in desktop, a lot of times you tinker, you want a lot of the newer software packages, and Debian Stable just doesn't really offer that. So uh, most people use a different release of Debian, and I'm going to just go ahead and get into the release cycles of Ubuntu versus Debian. And when it comes to the releases of both, Debian usually goes for three types of releases. You have the stable release, which I said it runs several years behind. Then you have the unstable release, which runs a lot newer, but still not bleeding edge by any means. It's no, no, not like an Arch installation. It's still running probably a good year behind in a lot of instances, depending on the software packages. And then it also has what's called unstable or SID. And this one is bleeding edge. It's pretty much like a rolling release in Debian, which is pretty amazing. I've actually run SID for six years, or not six years, six months. <laughs> six years, no, that, <laughs> that's not a thing. But yeah, six months worth of Debian SID. And it is one really, really well, still very stable. I would even say more stable than when I was on a rolling release of Arch, just constantly updating it. So uh, they do a really, really good job at Debian with these three release cycles. I think all of them are very good. If you care about, uh, if you're a desktop user, you want to use Debian, most people do testing um, for their actual one. So unstable and SID are a little bit out there, but testing that, that uh, one just above stable is usually what most people choose, and you really can't go wrong with testing. I think this one should really be renamed uh, desktop stability, I mean, or something like that. Just so if you're a desktop user, testing is usually where you end up if you just want a rock solid system, because I don't think I've even heard of an instance where testing really broke. So uh, it's very rare Debian would break anyways, but that is Debian's release cycle. And then we're jumping over to Ubuntu. They only have two types of releases, LTS releases, which run two years behind. And then they have point releases, which run six months at a time. Um, the LTS releases are more guaranteed to run like five years of support where the point releases, I think only go like a year or two as far as the support's concerned. So most people opt for the LTS releases of Ubuntu because everything's geared around those and they last a long time. So that's why you always see the Ubuntu LTSs. The point releases are most of the time just to play around with. Uh, not very many people actually run the point releases, but those are the two different of releases between the two. So let's get into the actual installation process. The installation process of Debian Ubuntu is one that is a lot different. Debian is much more unuser friendly, I'll say, is probably a better way of putting this, because to really get a desktop use of Debian, I like to use some of their custom ISOs, but uh, their actual installers just not as clean and sleek as the Ubuntu counterparts. So installing a Debian can be a bit of a chore a little bit. I, I, I hate to make it out worse than it is. I just had more difficult because I ran into a lot of issues when I did my actual live install, which I was like ended up being like a five or six hour live stream in two parts, which is kind of nuts. It should have really only been about 30 or 30 minutes to an hour to install Debian. I just had a little little bit of hiccups when I did it. But 
uh, overall both install just fine, but take the time to hunt down the right Debian installer. With Ubuntu, you just grab your installer and go. With Debian, they have a lot of options. And these, this is kind of a cool selling point when it comes to Debian, because you can say, I want the KDE desktop environment with non-free uh, proprietary drivers and things. And you can go ahead and pick that out. It, the only issue is you have to really drill down to find it. So uh, it can be a little bit of a, a difficult thing, but the installation is definitely a lot different than your Ubuntu counterpart because Ubuntu is just so darn easy. So uh, I thought I'd mention that before you just jump into one or the other. Ubuntu, you'll never have a problem with. Pretty much anybody can install Ubuntu. For Debian, there's a lot of things about it, little quirkiness to its installer that can get you. So between the two, which one do I enjoy the most? And really, this is an easy choice since I've been on Linux almost a full year now, or Linux desktop a full year, and for me, it's by far and away Debian. I've run it on my production machine for the majority of this YouTube channel. Almost everything I've edited has been on Debian. And the reason why that is, is it's so darn stable. Even when I was running the unstable version, which I ran the unstable for six months, pretty much every video on this channel has been produced on Debian Unstable. And it is extremely, extremely reliable and lightweight. There's almost no packages. Like you, when you first install Ubuntu, it comes with a whole bunch of bloat. Even doing the minimal install, there's just a ton of crap on it. Where Debian is just so lightweight, buttery smooth, just fast, right out of the gate. As long as all your stuff works and all your drivers are there, you're good. So uh, it just, depends on what you do but i highly recommend debian kde non-free installer if you're going to go the debian route for the first time definitely choose this out but remember not really meant for a newbie it's meant for someone that's been on several different distributions out there but i have to say this has probably been my favorite out of all the distributions i've ever tried was this specific release I absolutely love Debian a, a lot more just because you get to choose what's going on with it. Now that said, the out of box experience when it comes to Debian, when you boot first into it, is horrible. It's just atrocious. And let's not, I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you. It doesn't feel good, warm, and fluffy like Ubuntu does. Because Ubuntu, you start out and you're like, oh yeah, everything's just kind of here. I'll grab this program, this program, and things will be okay. And then I'll probably need to de bloat some of the Ubuntu junk that's on here. Debian goes the opposite direction. You get in and you're like, oh crap, I need to install a whole bunch of stuff really before I can get going. So for me, when I installed Debian, it really took me about a week, maybe even two weeks before I really, really fell in love with it because there was so much customization and things I was changing and getting it just right. And then after that, it was fantastic. But Really, I wanted to make this video so you can understand the differences between the two. Because so many people don't really realize the two different distributions here. Even though Ubuntu is based on Debian, there's a lot of stuff packed onto it. And it makes it a very seamless experience for most people out of the gate. That's why so many people love Ubuntu. But at the same time, there's so much bloat and junk in it, like when you go with snaps and it's live update system and a, a lot of its notifications. I just hate these systems I, that are installed by default. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of Ubuntu. But at the same token, you can remove that. You can customize Ubuntu to get what you want because as I always say, distribution really doesn't matter. It's just a starting point. And these are the two different starting points when it comes to Debian and Ubuntu. Completely different, but at the same time, both can work for you. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I'm always curious. It's always a heated debate between these two because there's some really big Ubuntu fanboys and then there's some people out there that just absolutely love Debian like myself, but which are you? And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.